Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about art career trajectory advice. I don't know where I came up with that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically from my last couple of Q&As, there is a couple of questions that I left out um, specifically to answer them in long format later on, which is what I'm doing today. One of these questions was, actually it wasn't one question, it was like a paragraph of multiple questions pertaining to uh, art career advice, specifically um, about freelancing, uh, etc. So I decided to kind of take those questions and expand on them and just go through a bunch of points one by one to just tell you guys about my personal experience when it comes to freelancing and client work over the years and I'll just kind of keep it casual and do my best to give you guys as much information as I can and just remember that this is all mostly from my personal experience and it's by no means like advice that will work for everybody but I think there's also a fair amount of stuff that I will cover that is common knowledge or sh I mean <laughs> I guess maybe not common knowledge but stuff that I've heard other artists say in their career advice videos so yeah so one of the first things that were asked in the series of questions was how to market yourself which is a great question and I have a little list of things that I'm going to cover when it comes to marketing yourself online. So I have gotten all of my jobs through social media with pretty much no exceptions. I mean, maybe there's something I will remember later on, but any any noteworthy jobs that I've ever done over the years have all come from the same place and that is social media. So I will talk about that. Basically, I think social media is the most important thing to you as a way to get yourself out there. I believe this mostly because it has worked so well for myself. I can't say if it's necessarily the same for everybody, but I mean... I went to art school, obviously, uh, I went to Sheridan College for Animation, and they have a lot of stuff there that's designed to like help you find jobs and make connections and stuff, and to be honest, I didn't find it particularly helpful. The only, like, I remember applying to jobs for um, the, whatchamacallit, the internship year, like between year three and year four. And I was able to get the two jobs that I applied for with my portfolio and with an interview. Whereas the whatever industry day thing that they had set up, like, that was pretty much pointless as far as I could tell. Because, I don't know, like, I feel like it's just a glorified, like, some sort of pony show where people show up with a badge from whatever, um company they're from they just kind of take a look around and then they leave i don't even know like i'm sure people got jobs uh i don't recall anything significant happening there trying to like mingle in person and trying to like be all you know sociable and shit like really didn't work out for me um but i already had a job lined up anyways and so in my personal experience um I like to focus on the quality of my portfolio aspect over any sort of like explicit social skill type of aspect because I know that a lot of the time like the advice is to learn how to be personable and like learn how to be friendly and like approach people and make connections and friends and stuff. I've never been very good at doing that and I mean... I think a good argument can be made for why that's important, but somehow I've been able to get by perfectly fine without turning into a social butterfly at those events. So for those of you guys who feel uncomfortable with the social aspect of things, don't let that make you think that it's impossible to get a job unless you're super sociable so yeah i mean focusing on your portfolio is great and circling back to social media 
that's basically kind of like a ongoing portfolio if you will i know that the format of a portfolio versus your social media um, are quite different things but i think a lot of the time social media is somewhat more effective is if you kind of curate it in a way that it shows a variety of your work in different stages for instance i know that I mean, I've never really had to hire anybody, anybody before, but you can very easily tell um, how well someone draws by looking at their sketches and by their preliminary work. And a lot of the time, the pre preliminary work is more telling than the finished work because sometimes you can, you know, put in 10 hours to polish something and make it look you know, close to the professional standard of things, where as what makes the professional work so valuable and so good is that it didn't take, like, you know, months to complete. <laughs> Anyways, that's a bit of a tangent. But the point is that um, seeing unfinished work is good and putting some sketchy work or just a variety of your art-related things into an Instagram account can be a good thing. So it doesn't, like, your Instagram account doesn't have to be, like, super clean and curated, I don't think. Um, the only thing I will say is if you do want to have a social media account like Instagram to serve as kind of, like, a portfolio, probably should go easy on irrelevant things, like maybe food posts or... I don't know, like, photos of your pets or something. Like, it's fine to do that once in a while, but as long as it's not, like, a big percentage. Because then the account just comes off as too personal, and it might uh, be less attractive to people who might potentially be hiring, if that makes any sense. But, I don't know. I mean, it, it's good to... Whatever will make you more personable on the internet, I guess will work regardless because the goal there is exposure i mean i know that a lot of people say like oh like you shouldn't uh chase fame or chase the likes and like the follows or whatever i mean it's not really so much about the likes and the follows as it is about every single person who follows you potentially being the middleman between you and a client or being the client themselves so if you frame it in the, the like that type of way, it's not really about chasing fame. It's just about getting your work out there to as many people as you can. That doesn't mean you have to be dead set and like obsessed with gaining followers or anything like that. But it would be stupid to say that your amount of followers doesn't matter. Like it shouldn't reflect on your self worth, but it will make a difference. It's, it's very simple. It's like the more people see your work, the more likely you'll get new clients. That's all there is to it. And if you decide to put out a product, or if you decide to put out a book or something, or take commissions or anything like that, obviously the more followers you have, the more likely you will have more customers. Like they're potential customers as well. Like people who like your work and follow you are potentially going to be the people who will help you along the way uh, monetarily. <laughs> That's just the reality of the situation, right? And obviously many people have a lot of videos on how to uh, navigate social media and I mean, I'm not gonna talk at length about that, but I'm just gonna say it's really good to post the kind of stuff that you actually like drawing a lot, post the stuff that you love, and post the kind of stuff that you would like to draw for a job so i wouldn't like so i, I just I, I know some people kind of tend to go about it backwards like they'll they'll look at what potential jobs there are out there and then try to cater their work towards some sort of specific job whereas if you just draw what you like and post it whatever strength that you have in your work will come out and then based on those strengths if the right people see your work they will contact they will just contact you based on that so you definitely would want that over trying to fit into some sort of preconceived category if if you know what i mean <laughs> hopefully that made sense um so uh the another point with that is 
avoiding like a jack of all trades thing because i know that some people uh say that if you're good at everything like the, the the more things you're good at the better i mean sure theoretically that's true um and by more things i mean like characters like props backgrounds storyboarding whatever comics illustration different styles sure you, you could go crazy right but I would say be realistic about it and like the more things you put out there the more confusing it might get for a potential client so it's best to just stick to a specific niche that you love and obviously that will probably be more likely to bring you the types of jobs that you will enjoy doing um I mean I personally (laughs) kind of uh, flop back and forth sometimes between like mediums and maybe even stylistically I flop around a little bit but overall I think that my work still is overall pretty coherent like it does have a unifying thread like you can tell that I drew all the stuff that I drew regardless of the medium that I used or the subject matter and the most prominent and like reoccurring element of my work is of course that I always draw characters and that's I think that's my strength and a lot of time I focus on things like facial expressions and just you know fashion so I could say that those those are the things that are present in my work regardless of what I post and you know I'm happy to say that most of the jobs that I get are in that vein like they all have something to do with character design and re- more recently fashion which is fantastic for me <laughs> anyways so yeah um i also wanted to say that it's a good thing to also try to make sure that your work isn't easily mistaken for somebody else's or is too like nondescript i know that's a really tough one to kind of explain and i definitely don't want to provide any examples but I have definitely noticed there are quite a few art accounts on Instagram, for instance, where like one specific artist will come to mind when you look at their work, obviously not them. And I don't know, I I do really think that people should reference at least a few artists if they're going to reference heavily or get heavily inspired uh, inspired by an art style. It's better to kind of... um, not stick to one person because then what ends up happening is your work becomes kind of like a mud a muddled version of somebody else so you just you will you will look like a discount version of whoever you're trying to imitate is what all of the work that i'm talking about looks like and there are a lot of art artists out there where you can sometimes clearly tell their top two favorite other artists on instagram and I i think it's better to kind of like find more more um a bigger variety of references and maybe even go non-contemporary like if you reference too many contemporaries like people who are currently famous and active i don't know it's just like i feel it just sets you up for like an imposter syndrome type of situation you should probably like check out older artists from past generations that have already influenced others and just just kind of expand the horizons a bit uh, and not box yourself in too much, especially when the person you're um, trying to emulate is currently active and is young and is like huge in the industry. It's just, I don't know why people do that. I mean, I get it. They're just super inspired, but Unless it's just for fun. I don't think it's the best career trajectory uh, situation. And yeah, I think that's about it for social media. I guess lastly, just in terms of how to grow your account and stuff, what people say about consistency is pretty much usually what does it. Because I noticed that it doesn't even matter, like, apparently now, it doesn't really matter how many followers you have. If you stop posting, you will just stop gaining. And it, you'll actually, like, start losing followers, which is what happens to me if I don't post for a couple of weeks. Um, the, insta- the algorithm is a really weird thing. Like, I don't keep a close eye on 
how many people follow my account, but I can definitely notice that when I become inactive, the number starts going down because I, I can see how people will unfollow. Usually that, um, that number is offset by new followers, but when there are no new followers and when you post something new, people get reminded of your existence and they're like, oh yeah, I'm not into this anymore, so they unfollow. Then suddenly the number just starts going down. So yeah, I guess uh, algorithms these days aggressively prefer constant activity, which sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Like I try not to sweat about it too much because I know that I can get super super stre super stressful if you're too worried about the level of activity you have online and honestly i could probably post a lot more if i just you know kind of thought about it more often i guess because i do draw a lot and i draw pretty much every day but you know what it is what it is whatever i'm kind of digressing at this point so the next thing I wanted to address is the person asked in their question if I ever joined any clubs or organizations uh, that helped me find work. And the answer to that is no. I don't really know what clubs or organizations there are for stuff like that. Like, I do think that maybe ArtStation is a place where people potentially find work. I don't know because I don't use ArtStation, but it looks like that it's uh, it's like a community that's based around concept art and games and finding work specifically because I do see them having like job postings from major studios and stuff like that. Um, as for like clubs, I don't know. I don't think so. In my experience, I have never done that, so I can't really talk about it. The only thing I will say is... Taking part in trends is good for exposure, as in like challenges, like community challenges or community activities, like Inktober and Mermaid and whatever random challenge comes up. That can be quite good for uh, quick exposure because people will be checking the hashtags and stuff like that. But in terms of finding actual work, that would be a no. Okay, and the next question was about whether I do multiple jobs uh, all at once or just one at a time. So the thing about freelancing is that I think it's impossible to really do one job at a time when you start uh, getting more established. Um, there, there were times uh, in the past when I would just have like the one job and I'll finish it and then shortly after another one would pop up so it just so happened to be that way but these days I do juggle two or three sometimes even four clients at the same time because I'm currently in a position where I have one semi-regular client where I think I'm pretty much working like part-time for one company because I do have constant tasks coming in and I work on that stuff at least a couple of days a week and I have been for the past several months which is great and aside from that I do get other jobs coming in here and there I only take the ones that are very well paid because other well it just it scales up because the my regular client is pretty well paid so it makes no sense for me to take on other jobs that are less paid, which obviously weeds out a lot of job offers that come in. And then I also obviously only take things that I would be interested in because my level of interest will directly reflect the result of the artwork, which is obviously something you'd want. So yeah, I tend to just pick the things that I'm interested in off right off the bat. But yeah, I think that it's very important to be able to plan properly when freelancing and juggling multiple jobs. And you also have to be pretty good at estimating how long it would take you to do certain things because being overworked is horrible. And I tend to obviously avoid that at all costs because burnout is just not really worth it. And at the same time, you know, you, you just want to be able to accurately estimate how long it'll take you to do stuff so that you can give quotes based on that which actually takes me 
to the next question, which was about some basic pay rates and how much things should pay. For understandable reasons, usually when this type of question comes up in these types of videos, nobody can really answer it <laughs> because uh, it really is... There's so many factors at play when it comes to pricing your work that it's impossible to to say what a good basic pay rate is for any given thing because it seriously depends on various factors about the artists as well as various factors about the client too. So, but I will obviously talk about it and I will throw some numbers in there when they come up and when they make sense. So, before talking about numbers, I just wanted to say that when it comes to pricing your work, I think the number one thing that I find very important is being able to realistically assess your skill level. So what I mean by that is in order to become kind of like more professional about art and treating it more like a job, is you have to, to a certain extent, be able to let go of the insecurities you have about your art and you have to put yourself in a different mindset where you can just coldly kind of look at your artwork literally side by side with somebody else's who gets a lot of jobs or with wh whatever artists you aspire to um to be i guess like any any artist that you look up to who clearly does it for a living and gets a lot of jobs in the same vein that you want to get jobs you have to be able to look at your artwork side by side and just be able to tell how far below you are and what you have to work on in order to get closer to their level um and aside from that you just also have to kind of have a general knowledge of what your art is worth in a realistic way so you you i don't know i guess you just have to be very practical when it comes to looking at these things and you definitely have to set emotions aside emotions like insecurities and like things like that i don't know you have to just practically look at your stuff and be like, okay well this looks pretty good and how, how a how long does it take me to do it and b how long uh, I mean, how much are people willing to pay for it? And that's kind of what it ends up being. Like, you have to make sure that what you're charging is a number that will not make you feel like shit about yourself. But obviously, somebody also has to pay it. And it's great when those two things coincide. <laughs> Anyways, so now that I got that out of the way... So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is how long it takes you to finish a drawing. So basically your speed. And I think a pretty easily overlooked but very important thing can be the ability to accurately estimate how long it'll take you to draw certain things. So this is kind of hard because I know that it's not like it's not like clockwork. You can't just crank out the same stuff. And sometimes certain things will take longer depending on how familiar or unfamiliar the subject matter is. Or even whether you're having a shitty day or not. But you still have to be able to get a reasonably accurate estimate, of hour, per, like hourly estimate of how long it'll take you to do something. I like the hourly estimate personally because I draw pretty quickly so it just it kind of helps me to break things down because I know that some people estimate with days uh, which is which is fine if it works for them I just prefer the hourly thing and the tricky thing about hourly estimates is, is that like logically right the longer something takes you the more you'll get paid for it get paid for it because you know it takes more hours and that's that's the tricky part because that's not how it works and neither should it be how and, and it shouldn't be how it works either so 
I'll just give you guys an example. So, for instance, if you get, like, one commission that's, like, relatively detailed and is maybe, like, black and white or something. I don't know. Whatever. So, let's just say it takes five hours and you're charging $50 an hour. So, the total for that is $250. I think for, like, a, you know, reasonable skill level, that's a reasonable price. I would not, like, it, that's too low for me. I, I wouldn't do five hours of work for $250. That's too low. And my current hourly rate is much higher than $50 an hour. But at some point, a couple of years ago, that, like, a few years ago, that was my rate. And that's how I calculated. And back then, that was fine. Like, I did five hours of work for $250. But for instance, if instead of the five hours it took me 10 hours to do the same amount of work and i also charged the 50 dollars an hour um that would have jumped the price of the commission up to 500 dollars. and i mean we're just like for the sake of the example we're talking about commissions here i would say the pool of potential customers that would pay 500 dollars for the same type of work is significantly lower so you're probably just not going to get that customer if you are at a certain skill skill level and depending on how much ex like how much uh how well exposed your art is so like i said there's a million different factors so like for instance if you're in great demand you can definitely charge more it doesn't all hang on your skills or on your speed and for instance if you can draw faster that doesn't mean that you should, you know, get paid less. It actually means that you should get paid more. But for commissioned work specifically, uh, time isn't a huge factor. So you kind of have to just be able to discern to yourself what seems reasonable. Like if you look at a piece of art and to you, like $300 for a commission seems reasonable and it takes you like a few hours, even if that's over $100, uh, or over $50, sorry, an hour, that's fine because it seems reasonable to you. And especially if somebody's willing to pay for it, then it's it's all good. Uh, however, when it comes to client work, like when you're working for um, a company, and especially if you are given like a short time frame to do something or if they need it fast, like your speed is actually worth more. Because to them, the faster they can get what they need, the less time they're wasting. And and obviously, time means money in companies. So the faster you can get something done, the more you can actually charge. So for instance, personally, like if, if I have a lot of work going and then I get a client who, who needs something done like very quickly, I will often apply a certain percentage of rush fee the faster they need it to get done so technically like I'm doing something quicker and I'm spending less time but I know that I can still do it to the same level of quality even if it's fast and therefore I can charge more so if you see what I mean it's it's a little bit complicated but once you get the hang of working with clients it's 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 not that big of a deal and it mostly just depends on your relationship with the client and what they require from you and how confident you are in being able to like meet their requirements that's about it so i just wanted to mention some factors that should probably go into deciding how much you should charge for any given job so for you um as the illustrator or whatever artist <laughs> 2d person um your age is a big factor so if you were like a teenager and if you haven't i mean i don't know i don't know how much that actually really matters but um your reliability is a big factor so i would say if you're like an extremely skilled teenager that's fine you can charge however much you can get away with however what's important is to not have any prior obligations like school that might like take over your schedule or something so you have to be able to professionally deliver um within the agreed upon time frame and that's pretty much all that matters but overall i'm gonna say that 
usually when you're younger you just don't charge that much and usually people don't pay teenagers all that much either so i don't know maybe maybe it's different for some prodigies out there but i'm gonna say that if you're like below 20 like maybe 18 or or younger don't really worry about it like just dip your toe and see if you can get some commissions like just work on your like worry about your skills because that's the best time to get your skills up if you're in your early 20s and you're like still in college and you want to pursue art seriously i would say take some jobs within reason um if you can handle doing art jobs as a, uh, at the same time as college because i did that to some extent but it was really difficult because uh the 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 program that I went to was a ton of work and it was exhausting. It's exhausting to have to deliver so much artwork constantly. So I really couldn't do a whole lot of freelance work, even though I still did because I kind of needed to to survive. Mostly what I did was commissions. So yes. And again, with the age sorry if i lost track of that question anyways so if you're older like you're in your 30s and you're approaching like having a family to support and hopefully you've gotten your skills up by that point obviously you can charge a lot more you can always give yourself a raise with each year of successful work and you know it's it's pretty reasonable to increase your hourly wage or daily rate or weekly rate or whatever so yeah um other factors obviously like i mentioned is your skills and your years of experience also goes hand in hand with your age and your speed i've already talked about that uh your ability to work with clients effectively also matters like if you get a new job with potential uh you you have to make sure that you communicate very well and very clearly and listen to what they want and also not go way too overboard with what's expected from you because i mean i feel like it comes off as unprofessional and kind of student-like when you go way too beyond what's what's requested it's kind of like the keener student in art class or something like nobody nobody's gonna like congratulate you for that and it's probably just gonna make you look more desperate than anything so it's good to just do what what you have to do and make sure that you don't go beyond what you're being paid for is my point and your self-worth actually has a lot to do with it too so depending on how much you can feel comfortable with charging i mean that's a little bit of a complicated one too because i used to feel really weird about charging charging a certain amount and now I charge a lot more than that and it feels a lot easier to do just because obviously consistently there are people and clients who are willing to pay that much which has helped me with my self-worth and I don't question it as much as I used to. It's definitely not something that happens overnight but I promise that if you work hard and you keep doing good work and you start building clients that come back you will naturally feel comfortable with charging however much you're charging for your work so there's that and obviously like i mentioned just now uh clients like how much they're willing to pay will also vary greatly so like one of the things that were asked in the question is what's a reasonable charge or price for a graphic novel or for like book illustrations and you guys i don't know like i don't know what a reasonable price is I would say that if you were a professional illustrator, I mean, I don't know if this is going to sound like really whatever. My personal rule is that I'm not going to pick up a pencil for less than $100 because I don't know. That's just a rule that I have. If it's less than $100 and it's not a serious job. So there's that. Um, When it comes to children bo- children's books i know that a lot of people do that for fun like it's uh, their side project and they look for artists to help them out that's a vastly different um situation than if it's somebody who is with a publishing house and they actually have a budget 
So there's all those things to take into consideration. And I mean, at the end of the day, if you're willing to, if you're going to um, name your price and you're consistently overshoot, like I've definitely overshot before um, a couple of times where the client kind of like, and the thing is the client isn't going to like, I mean, not in my experience anyway, they're not going to tell you like, oh my God, are you crazy? Like you're charging way too much. Like they're never going to say that. They're just going to politely just say that they either found someone else or um, they'll try to like kind of ask if you could come down a little with the price. And that's perfectly fine. Like negotiating is totally fine. Um, one thing you don't want to do is undershoot because obviously if you set a low amount, they will take it because <laughs> the negotiation kind of goes in, in, in one direction. Like, anyways, whatever. The point is that don't be afraid to overshoot when you're asking, when you're naming your price. So on that note, I would want to mention that it's, it's not good to operate from a place of desperation. <laughs> I would know because I've had to do it before <laughs> and it's pretty much the worst like when you operate from a place of desperation you're like I, I'll just talk about myself here like I would be so scared to lose the client or accidentally overshoot and like have them take or like find somebody else that I would like lowball myself on purpose just to make sure that I get the job and stuff like that it's a horrible place to be so I would say that having some savings i mean for me as a general rule i have to have at least six months worth of basic expenses in my savings account at all times uh and that's the kind of question that gives me the freedom to not have to constantly shake and like af be afraid to lose a client or whatever because it's like it's a horrible place to be and yeah, you definitely don't want that. So saving money constantly is is a good idea as a freelancer. I I realize this that this video is not very like specific and it kind of just talks about freelancing at large, but I mean, I'm sorry guys, bear with me. <laughs> I did try to organize it in my notepad and I have a bunch of points that I want to go through and I have been making my way through them but I do realize that obviously I tend to ramble a lot so this video is way longer than I thought it would be but anyways I'm just gonna continue so I wanted to mention a couple of specific numbers so um because I didn't want to just like you know talk about all this vague stuff and then mention no actual rates at all so I've gotten a job before for a like young adult children's book cover which the cover itself was paid three thousand dollars and uh what i had to do was like a couple of thumbnails for different ideas and then obviously a couple of sketches uh so there was some rough work involved not too much and overall i'd say that's like a reasonable price to me three thousand for a cover that all in all together like all together probably took around a week of actual work even though it obviously took um, it dragged for longer than that because back and forth usually like you have to wait a couple of days for the client to get back to you with feedback and you know sometimes decisions take time but overall of actual work it was maybe like a week and three thousand dollars for a week is a great rate is a good rate so that's a reasonable rate I would say if if that helps at all with a number for a graphic novel or something like I mean I don't know if I would ever want to do that again. So to me, I don't think the, the price that I would name would be anything anybody would be able to afford to pay me, which is basically saying that I just don't want to do it and I won't do it unless I'm just doing it for myself, in which case I am not paying myself. I'm just, just like a voluntary thing and hoping for the best, you know, if you know what I mean. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, if you want to do some sort of basic math on how long it'll make, uh, it'll take you to do a page and then make sure that your page rate is far above minimum wage and is a reasonable number to you, that would be a reason reasonable, um, amount to charge. But when it comes to comic work and like graphic novels and stuff, it's its own industry and they do have their own standard pricing like 
I think from what I can remember from doing some basic research on how much well-known artists get paid per page I don't remember I'm just gonna google it right now actually okay so I just did some quick googling and I don't know how accurate this is but it says that pencil and inker artists can ask for 75 to 200 dollars a page which to me is like, I mean, $75 is a joke. $200 is eh for pencil or for inker. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't do it. But $200 a page would probably be, like, okay. And it says that a lucky few dozen famous artists working for top companies bring in up to, like, $1,000 per page. I think $1,000 per page is reasonable. Like, if you're doing, say, if you're doing pencils, inks, and colors, $1,000 per page sure <laughs> like that doesn't even sound like that much to me like it takes forever to do a page it depends on how quickly they can get it done obviously but if you could do like two or three pages a week thousand bucks per page seems very reasonable if you are a person with a family to support with multiple kids you know like i have no idea the comic book industry is a weird one so i'm not really gonna say anything else about that so yeah, what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, I want to talk about commissions um, because I did talk about client work for a little bit and now I just wanted to compare. Like I wanted to tell you guys what the differences are uh, primarily between commissions, like private commissions and client work because those two are very different things and I think sometimes they get lumped in together but they are very different. So first of all, there's no contracts involved with commissions. It's Commissions are like casual collector type of thing where somebody who, like a patron of art, like a person who loves art, just has some extra money and they want an original piece by an artist they like. And that's a vastly different situation from clients looking for an artist to fulfill the job that needs to get done in the best way possible, right? So the the budget is usually very different because the person who will contact you from a company is not the person who pays you it's just the person who contacts people right whereas the person who contacts you for a commission is the person directly who needs the artwork and who is paying for it so i'm just gonna go through a couple of pros and cons for each so for commissions uh like private commissions that you obviously get off of whoever you're following like um from your following um, the cons are usually commissions pay less because you have to be kind of reasonable when charging people. And But, but I think it depends on your status as an artist too. Because I know that specifically actually in the comic book industry, if you're a well-known name, you can charge a lot of money for commissions. And that's because I think comic books come with like a certain... Um, demographic of people who take art very seriously and specifically are willing to pay large amounts of money for original pieces by artists that are well known in that industry but if you're like um a general artist like less comic related um it is slightly different so i i don't think the pool of people with a large budget is as big but it still greatly depends because obviously these people are individuals and it depends each person has a different income and different budget for how much they're willing to spend on art so i'm not gonna sit here and say that they always pay commissions always pay less than client work but in my general experience i've just i've never attempted to charge as much as i charge uh for commissions as i do for client work because I think it would just scare people um, for good reason because I don't like I wouldn't necessarily be able to find a budget to pay an artist for like private work. Anyways, whatever. I digress. Um, so yes, it's it's usually less less money, um, and it's mostly single use. So, as in like those hours that you're gonna put into that work. They will only result result in this one piece and that's it like you can't really do anything else with it um however i'll just go jump straight into the pros so one of the pros is that if you are commissioned a character like a well-known character 
I have asked before, like I just politely asked the person who commissioned me for the piece if I could use the artwork to make prints. Um, and I think because I also charge very reasonable amounts for the commissions, usually when I ask the the commissioners, are they're very kind, they don't have a problem with that, they, they love to see me make a little bit of an extra income if I can through sales of prints, and obviously like they get the original and they get to keep the original, and I will usually send them a print copy as well. And yeah, so that's a pro, like having a relationship with people who really love your art and sometimes they'll come back and commission you multiple times. That's really great too. I really like that aspect of it. Um, it's usually low involvement and by that I mean there's less back and forth in nitpicking because clients usually have some sort of specific mold that you have to fit in, whereas when a person commissions you personally, um, they just really love your work and they're not gonna, like, micromanage how you do it. I mean, I would hope so anyway. I've never had an experience with micromanaging commission people. Anyways, um, you also get the creative freedom, so you get to pick a pose um, uh, and decide to depict the character in whichever way you see fit, which is also very great and sometimes I can even get a lot of inspiration from that type of freedom because you definitely don't get that with uh, most client work. Uh, you also get stylistic freedom obviously because that's what the commissioner is looking for when they come to you and you can usually get it done, well I mean I can usually get it done pretty quickly because of the low involvement communication slash creative freedom so like they'll ask you w what you want generally what they want generally and you will just do it and that's about it there isn't like this whole dragged out thumbnail like roughs reiterations i <laughs> i mean not for me anyways i don't know if other people do this but the reason why i don't do this with uh com personal commissions is because it'll just drive up the price like uh if i'm gonna do back and forth and reiterate and like uh, correct stuff that's that's extra work so i'll have to like our hourly ch charge extra for stuff like that which is kind of tedious and since usually commissions like i offer a l relatively reasonable flat price per piece or whatever um yeah, I've never even really had a situation in which I had to do that, so I'm not sure, to be honest. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so with client work, um, some of the cons are there is significantly more involvement and back and forth, which can take a lot more time. Sometimes clients are problematic in a way that, like, they don't know what they want. They can usually tell what they don't want, but they can't really tell you what they do want. And usually to nip that kind of stuff in the butt, you have to just charge for every single iteration past like one extra rough or something that you can offer them free of charge at the beginning but if you find that the client is problematic you just have to charge them for your time and that's it and they will usually learn very quickly that they have to become more decisive so it works great for both parties um but yeah there's usually less creative freedom and less stylistic freedom which are things that are you know not the most desirable but it also depends on the client right so sometimes like stylistically they will find you and if they want your artwork specifically then sometimes you're good with just the way that you naturally draw which is a great um scenario and the pros are usually when it's like a company they have a significantly bigger budget uh, and it's also good to possibly build long-term relationships as well because some companies, if they have a good experience working with you and if you can deliver quickly and efficiently and if you're good at communication, they will come back to you with more work later on. And obviously, it's good to have professional experience dealing with companies and art directors and such. Um, and also, I would say like one of the most enjoyable things about client work is that you get to, or I get to work with people and I've had I've come into the studio a couple of times for like a meeting or something which is great or even just having a phone meeting discussing the ideas and just bouncing off of other people and just working with other people that are also involved in the process like for some of the client work I get I will get a art direction brief where um 
they will explain to me what the client wants and have sometimes they'll include like references and like conceptual notes and things like that it's a lot of fun i really like that aspect of things because it's pretty inspiring and usually they're not too constructive so they'll still there will still be enough uh space for you to like flex your creative muscles and figure out like a good composition those are the type of types of things that i personally find extremely re rewarding because it comes with like a set of challenges and concrete problems that you have to solve with your artistic skills which is usually like you know composition and like being able to pick some colors and whatever etc so yeah if i had to choose which one i prefer i would say i i i like client work more in general and I haven't actually taken personal commissions in a while now. It's mostly because I don't want to charge too much. And, you know, like, I don't know how to really put it. I guess I, I just don't really want to update my prices because I feel like they would be too high at this point. But you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll do something someday. I don't know. But also, like, uh, with freelance stuff, sometimes work just kind of dries up unexpectedly, and that's always something that could happen. So usually what happens is when it does dry up, that's when I'll take some commissions because I will have extra time on my hands. So yeah, I mean, that ended up super long as usual. <laughs> but the last thing that I wanted to mention about being a freelance artist is that one of the baseline most important things to do in order to be able to function like anxiety like without anxiety in such a precarious kind of position because you don't you never know when the next job will come or if it won't you have to have a very fair amount of savings and i just wanted to kind of also talk about what other precautions i personally take it, it's not to say that it's a precaution, but I do have like a plan B and a plan C and a plan D if commission suddenly or, or sorry, if client work just dries up and if suddenly for some reason, like my store just doesn't make any sales or <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like precautions against random things like that. I have a couple of plans in the back of my head that I can put in motion immediately if for some reason something goes wrong you know what i mean so something like that is good and to be more specific like i i used to sign up for conventions as kind of like a plan b because it's something that i don't i don't really like conventions because it's like a whole other beast with crazy planning involved and it's a lot of work but it's more often than not it is worth it and so I will usually sign up and then if I get in I can kind of estimate to see if I have the time to go and if I do if it'll be worth it and if it'll help so there's that and then like some of my plan C and plan D is like I I have plans for new products in the back of my head that I'm kind of saving for when I have time but also time equals no work right so if I get less work then I have more time so logic follows that when I have that time, that'll be the perfect time to execute the new product plan that I have in the back of my mind, which will help me make something I really want to make, but also hopefully earn some decent income to, you know, continue paying the bills and stuff. And plan D, like if everything just goes to hell, uh, there's some career <laughs> options that I'm mildly interested in that I would probably wouldn't mind trying to pursue if everything just suddenly fails for some reason one of those being like becoming a tattoo artist i think i'd be pretty good at that because i have a very steady hand and i like design so yeah so there you guys have it and i know that this was like a super super long video and i do think i covered a lot of important aspects of being a freelancer but yeah, I also think it was kind of general, and I know that it didn't address anybody specifically, but hopefully as somebody who maybe considers art as 
a option for a future career or is trying to get into it. I mean, I really hope that I was able to shed some light on at least certain aspects that you might be interested in. But, but yeah, thank you so much for um, continuing to watch my videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye!